Cassie, and I'm with you until 10 o'clock. Now, it was World Mental Health Day last Thursday, and the theme this year was mental health in the workplace. Is that a topic you're familiar with, the way you work? Well, uh, with I mean, different South Asian communities, taboo of talking about mental health in South Asian communities is changing, possibly. I'm joined now by Devi Sundar, founder of Teletherapies, to tell us more. So, Devi, I said that in my introduction that maybe talking about mental health issues among the Asian communities, that's changing. Is it? Um, sorry, if I um, understand right, um, is that the topic about mental health changing among the Asian population? Yes, talking about question? it, yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so, again, like, um, the, for the, the honest answer is people are becoming more aware and assertive to attend to their own mental health challenges, um, discard of their cultural origin or ethnicity. So um, we all share a common human experience. We all share emotions and it's universal. And uh, in, in the past, in the ancient times, we were many cultural taboos and stigmas were around uh, mental health challenges, not only particularly in Asian communities, but worldwide. Yeah, um, the cultural differences existed in how they perceived mental health and stayed away from attending the mental health and talking it openly. Uh, until late 19th century and 20th century, until psychology and psychiatry was established very well, founded, mental health was not attended seriously in any of the cultures. So it's, um, I would say that it's unfair to blame alone the Asian community is not talking about and uh, considering if it's taboo and a stigma. It is a worldwide concept. And uh, slowly when the psychology and psychiatry established and people started to talk about, more Western people were openly able to communicate and see it as a problem, but still they were not coming out. But in Asian culture, it is a highly significant taboo and a stigma uh, about the mental health where the collectivism is a major concept and uh, a mental health is considered to be a personal failure and a collective shame or uh, to the owner, to the family. So that was kept within the family circle and uh, they and the other thing is they didn't need to go to, uh, support for the external support because in Asian community it is families are collective and a larger families. There were bigger joint families and people were there. For them around and so there was a social communication so for a human brain as a social animal we all wanted to express our emotion and needed a person to be with us to express our emotion so that was more fulfilled and so it was more kind of um, very silent and uh, also and um, uh, other thing was related to the owner and other things, so that people were not coming out. And also, there were some practices, spiritual practices, for example. Now, westernized culture is bringing in the meditation, yoga, and that's all from the Eastern culture, South, e South Asia, Eastern cultures, those were coming in through the Western culture. So, from cultural perspective, we have stronger roots in Asian uh, population to attend to our own personal human needs of uh, emotion and when we talk about emotional health health is a concept of physical emotional and social and also to add a component of economical health as well so that forms a whole concept of health um, by definition by world health organization definition and so it's not a mere absence of disease so that concept has been well being founded and attended with some practices within the eastern asian southeast asian cultures and now, in terms of why we are talking more about mental health and mental health in workplaces is because of loads of changes, um, economic changes, uh, peer pressures, and um, other multicultural concepts ingrained when we're talking uh, about uh, Asian culture in UK. And uh, as we are, as I'm living in the UK, um, there is multicultural concept and we are all more open to exchange our culture to some degree. What sort, of, what, sort of, what sort of stress do you think um, people are going through when they work at work? In terms of when they are at work, but, um, so if you're actually talking about a work environment, multicultural concept, there is uh, cultural beliefs is the conflict, main conflict coming into. So when you're talking about the Western culture, it is more of the individuality and individual success 
And uh, when talk about the um, Asian culture, it's more into collectivism. So there is no kind of uh, personal expression or individuality expressed. They all want to conform to a collective teamwork. And there is a conflict in that, in the work culture. And also, sorry, yeah, go on. So, so how do we deal with that then? How, how can people who think they might be suffering from workplace stress workplace mental illness what's the solution what do we do so in terms of workplace uh, culture and solution uh, there needs to be a root change especially uh, change start talking talking about the change there should be the structural policy change in the recruitment and how the tailored programs uh, training programs are uh, delivered to the asian culture and uh, clarity in exposing to relevant progressions and uh, opportunities what they can be exposed and trained and with no uh, biases. So there are a lot of um, workplaces here about unconscious biases. A lot we can hear at workplaces. And as human, we are able to control our consciousness. So we are living in a conscious world. So I would uh, personally, my, my view is bringing in an unconscious bias in causing uh, any kind of uh, harassment or bullying is, 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 a, is not fair. It's an un- unjust treatment for um, any other cultural people coming into, so I'm talking about the Western and the Asian culture here particularly, so if I make it very clear. Mm. And uh, so to be a clear kind of um, leadership uh, management and uh, human resources management, and also the communication and the language, how they communicate. Most of the Asians are actually blamed off their communication and how they communicate in English yeah that's the major thing in ancient practices like when people started to migrate from the Asian to the Western the communication is more targeted towards how they speak but humans don't need to use much words it's more communication happens non-verbally your emotions and mental health challenges are often being targeted by non-verbal communications rather than by the Verbal communications. Well, the thing is, I work, I've worked at various organizations over the years. One of the things I've noticed is the Asian people don't necessarily socialize with whatever the other people are doing. Like, for example, if they have a Christmas party or they have another party, a birthday party, and they're going to go out for a social drink or a social event, uh, they won't necessarily join in, and even when they they want to, they'd rather get on with doing the work, and they're all very nerdy and getting on with it. Don't you think that 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 probably doesn't help the situation? Um. <laughs> Okay, so in terms of uh, socializing concepts, so we all talk about individuality. I mentioned earlier, Western is more expressive about the individual individuality and more open and direct in communication, um, but not so in many aspects. So they do also have their own weaknesses as well. As a human, we are all bound for strengths and weaknesses. And the Asian culture, from, from your scenario, well, the socialization concept of uh, joining a Christmas party, if I put a question, how many of the Western people are joining the Diwali, the Festival of Light. Yeah, but, we're living, in, sort of, yeah, but yeah. we're living in Britain, so we should be following the British culture more. I mean, only 10% of the people are ethnic minorities. Most of the 90% are British white. Why, why, would, they want to, why would they want to join a Diwali party? Because it's not part of their culture. Okay, so in terms of, um, I totally understand where they're coming from, but um, in terms of when you're living... Uh, in a in a country where their culture is different from other culture, we're also talking about diversity and inclusion. Yeah, mm. when we're talking about that concept, the diversity, we are going to re- we are open for respecting all cultures. Yeah, no, that, that's, and uh, that's fair enough. But what I'm yeah. just sort of thinking the mental health and the issues that uh, you, you know you talk about the Asian people. Uh, may be suffering from mental health issues but if they're not participating in some of the social activities apart from just getting on with the work then that must have an effect because as you, you said at the right at the beginning one of the things with mental health is that you've got to talk to people you've got to communicate if you don't socialize and communicate and you just get on with your job well that's not going to help you surely um 
So in terms of, um, I understand what, uh, what you're saying. So in terms of um, Christmas parties, or ma- Christmas is a major celebration in UK. And um, it, I would put down to, when we talk about as a psychotherapist, indi- each individual has their preferences, who, which culture or which celebration they want to join. It's again the personal choice what a human can make. Yeah, and uh, for example, if you're actually joining, I, I attend many of my Christmas parties so far over 20 years of my uh, work experience in different countries. But uh, it's not all people have the interest to join the celebration. Yeah, and likewise, as I mentioned, how many of the British actually join the uh, Asian uh, the, the Asians have a multiple celebrations. So how many of them participate? So this, there, we can debate all day long on this concept, why the people are not, certain people are not attending certain kind of parties. But in terms of socialization, it is, uh, to respecting a human doesn't need to come through socialization. Mm-hmm. Respecting a human, the basic, basic concept, you be, be, or me being a human. Yeah, mm. and the respect is actually tied to be need to be tied to you come to my party and then I start to respect call you Mr. or Miss. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. Mm. So as a human, we all are bound to ethical principles and uh, basic respect to another human who is in a work. And when you're talking about hiring, then we're, we're talking about socialization and other things. Coming back to the concept of hiring, you're actually hired for your skills. Yeah. When you're coming to the uh, recruitment part yes, of it, yes, you're not yes. hired from um, for your socialization concept. You're not hired because of your, your external appearances. To some degree, it might actually be factored in, but it is, depends on the sector what you're being recruited to. Yes, yeah? it depends on the job because there, some of the jobs require you to be able to communicate with all sorts of people, regardless of Ex- your skills. Yes. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I agree with you. So, um, again, communication is a basis. As I, um, as I wanted to go back to my earlier statement, it, uh, certain jobs require more communication compared to certain other jobs. For example, IT or a data analyst don't need communication skills. They need to prove the actions yeah. in the data analysis. Yeah? yeah, and so it depends on the role and the nature of communication and the socialization concept. For example, uh, for me, the people who are in the IT are the highly stressed people compared to other sectors because yeah, they don't because communicate. It, <laughs> it could be because they're not communicating with anyone. They're just communicating exactly. with the computers. That's why they're highly stressed. They, well, you know, I'll tell you a story. In the, when I was doing my A-levels in Swindon and I, I was waiting for the results and I went to work in a factory in um, Swindon. I was only about 18, 19, 17, that sort of age. And uh, there were all these people working in the factory. I just say to them, it's such a a boring job. Why do you do this job? And then these people say, oh, it's because we like talking to the other people that work here. And they're only working there because they liked communicating with other people. And I think that's very Mm -hmm. important for mental health. To, it doesn't matter what job you're doing, if people are getting stressed for whatever they're doing, surely they've got to communicate with other people and that helps you in the, in the long run. They've got to talk more, socialise more, talk about their stre- the problems they're having, the difficulties they're having. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. There's all yeah. these IT people who just get... Because my master's degree is in information systems and technology and I know what you're talking about. But if you just isolate yourself, you're not communicating and you're only talking to machines, but then obviously you are going to have stressful problems, aren't you? Exactly, exactly. And uh, there need to be uh, other forms of uh, venting out of their um, stress levels into their family or into other parts of their extracurricular activities, um, Mm -hmm. um, maybe have other funds to vent out. And again, we cannot actually... um, a question about why IT people are like that because their job nature is that and without IT people uh, even today the show cannot be run uh, in the radio BBC radio if yeah. there is no IT people behind the scenes yes, yeah? yeah so we have a lot, uh, different kind of diverse kind of workforces but each of the workforces have different way of communication but we're talking about individual mental health here and when you're talking about Asian mental health in workplaces and uh, coming back to the concept of socialization there needs to be I think uh, from my, it is my personal opinion and you can differ from me I think that there needs to be a diverse ways of commu- socialization activities to be organized by organization when they are ready to recruit an Asian 
population into their organization so that's something which uh, we all uh, we have to accept there is a gap there where uh, trying to narrow down the options um with, with where the asians struggle to communicate yeah mm-hmm. for example if you go to a coffee shop there is a diverse kind of options for you cappuccino latte and uh, flat white whatever it is yeah and uh, not all people are going to like cappuccino yeah there's mm-hmm. going to be a different option for them mm-hmm. so like like i i would uh, i would put down to the structure organization where the management um should actually look into and again coming into the management there are different levels of management low level and mid level and the senior level low level are actually following the mid level management and mid level is chained between the high level and the low level and it is coming down to where the high level have to design a, a blueprint of what is that activities they can make in engage the whole workforce and uh, make them the inclusive in their um communication again like uh, there is a minority model here where um, asians are more kind of stereotyped as academically achieving perfectionists highly achieving and that again puts them into pressure not all asians are highly achieving although like if there is a family pressure and other things so that also puts an asian to be into an imposter syndrome and they go into a workplace that is a diverse culture and same happens to the other side as well the british workforce also have imposter syndrome because they actually want to express their individuality and they feel a shame and guilt if a, or a moral failure if they don't actually express or succeed in whatever so there is a conflict between human minds rather than humans mm-hmm. yeah so the human now conflict in human minds then actually then goes in into a bigger conflict as a i would say the interpersonal conflicts and it's not a communication conflict to some degree the communication plays but uh, more so with a non verbal communication and the fear of loss of one's face one's own face that is playing a l- lot of role in here when it comes to a workforce uh, stress and yeah. other things and um, when it comes to then the loss is for the asian minority communities because there is a power dynamics again in the workplaces Okay then. Yeah, more right. The case we, yeah. We have to leave it there, but you're on what's your website if anybody wants to find out more about what you do? Um so I actually have uh, my own practice tele-therapies.org and uh, we offer online mental health, lung health and occupational wellbeing services and um also we are going to run a Luma breath session online on the 9th of November and it's on our Facebook Uh, page right. tele.org yeah great david thank you very much for that thank you thank you mani